Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to paint some very loose holly. I'm going to make this a super quick video because we are all busy with the holidays coming, but I wanted to make a little quick video. We're celebrating one more time this week, Ellen Hudson's anniversary, and thought I would share a little bit of painting this holly stamp. I really love this, all of her Mondo flowers of all sorts, but this holly one is particularly gorgeous. So I'm using some Distress Oxides on watercolor paper, and I loosely put the green on, and now I'm kind of loosely tapping in the red, even putting some red on the edges of a few of the branches. And one of the cool things about red and green is that they are complementary colors. So they're going to go well together in terms of one dulling the other out so that you're if you're familiar with my theories, my color theory stuff that I teach in Copic Markers and Color Pencil, a lot of times you can use red to shade green and green to shade red. And I thought, let's play around with this and do something really loose and see what the two of them do together. So you can see I've got just loose spots of both colors all over the entire stamp. Not super even, so some of them just have a tip of red. Some of them have a little bit more red in them. Others are all green. And the, the mix between all of it is really nice. I'm just painting them with water, just plain water. Rinse the brush if, my, if I start spreading around too much color. And now with clean water, I'm painting outside of the stamp to do the background. And I'm trying to get it good and puddly so that it moves really nicely and I don't end up with weird edges. And I want to get most of the paper pretty wet. You could spray it, but then again, you could break down all that Distress Oxide ink and it could just totally disappear and go to mush. So I find it's a little easier to control it with a brush. I am using a number eight size brush. You could do this with probably easier with a number 12, but I decided I was going to try to stick with one brush and not switch out in between. And I'm adding in a little bit of sap green from my Daniel Smith watercolor palette as well because I wanted to kind of do some more splashy things get some more color on here and I didn't really want to get out more of the distress oxide ink you could do it as well with with that if you wanted to but I just wanted to add some more color to the background and keep those edges moving and nice and wet while I'm here and painting away I thought I'd say one more congratulations to Ellen Hudson on her anniversary this week we've been celebrating all over social media and everything, and I am so proud to be associated with a company like Ellen's. She runs it with such integrity. Her whole team does. They're super people. I love their customer service and how well they take care of people. And they're all about education, which you, if you know me, you know I'm all about teaching. And that's really important to me, not to just have good products in your hands, but to have a partner in doing that. They make sure they get good quality stuff that I can point you to, that I know I can trust the products, I can trust that they're going to arrive at your house in an appropriate fashion and you're going to be taken care of and we're all going to be able to learn together. What I'm doing here is painting with water first and then dropping in some Pyrrhal Scarlet because the color from the Distress Ink was just softer than I wanted. I let it dry and then I'm going to go back in and add some lost and found edges. By that I mean some edges are going to be really hard and some are going to soften and kind of melt into each other. If you just do what I what I just did here, I'm going to have to fuss with that a little bit in order to make it look a little better. If you just go around the outside edges of every single leaf, then it's going to look like it's pasted on. You're going to be adding shadow, but look how much nicer that one looks than the one that I did a minute ago, <laughs> where I have that, that hard edge around it. You just want to pick a few areas where you want to put that, that harder edge, that darker shadow. And it's going to let parts of it look like it's melting into the paper and parts of it look like it's lifting up. And that's what's going to give this the feel of that loose watercolor and, and just make it super spectacular. So that's, that's my advice to you when you try to, to fake these things. There are people who can paint like this just right off the bat without having to do any of this fussy edge creation that I end up having to do because I'm not that good at it yet at, at figuring out how to do that in one fell swoop, but I am getting better at the fixes. 
So I'm able to go back in on something like this and just add some dark areas, choose a few spots where there's dark shadows in between some leaves, but not letting it take over entirely. I don't want this to look like it's glued on and have a solid outline around anything. Just kind of take my brush with a little, little damp water on it and move some of that color around until it softens and looks like it's kind of melting in and just leave a few spots of very dark color because that's going to draw more attention. Contrast, as we've talked about many times here on my YouTube channel, contrast is what draws our attention and makes us stop and look at something. So I'm adding a little more of the sap green onto some of the leaves because I wanted to tie more of that background color into the leaf itself. I'm just kind of going back and forth between adding some of the Daniel Smith watercolor to what was already there from the Distress Oxide ink that I had stamped in the first place. Now, if you do something like this and you're like, oh man, my whole leaf just completely washed away. If you have it in your Misty, then you can re-ink it, just stamp a portion of it right over top. But I didn't feel like that was necessary here because I was kind of getting that loose look that I wanted. For the berries, I mixed up a little bit of purple into the Pyro Scarlet. And now I'm just gonna drop some of it on a few places in between some of the berries so I can create some of those really deeper shadows, those darker edges to make them look a little bit more dimensional. And to finish off my card, I just added some layers of cardstock and a stamp sentiment and called it done. Very loosely painted holly. Just to give you a heads up, in the month of December, I'm going to cut back a little bit on the video making. I'll do one card video a week, and then I might do some fine art videos here and there without voiceovers. But I'll be back in January 100% with Monday, Wednesday, Friday videos. So have no fear, things will restore to normal, but I needed a little rest break. So I thought December would be a good time. Since you're busy and I'm busy, I'll just take it easy. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.